Welcome back, everybody. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Those of you who are at the Sapphire Now channel, uh, we've switching over now to SiliconANGLE 2, or you can continue to watch with us. We're at the Knowledge Conference here in Las Vegas. My co-host, Jeff Frick, and I were here all day yesterday. We'll be here all day today and part of the day on Thursday. And of course, my colleagues, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly and David Floyer are covering the Sapphire Now show end-to-end. Uh, -end. They are in the communication center right next to where the press conferences are going down. So we've seen Bill McDermott, we've seen all the key executives, uh, some executives from the San Francisco 49ers, uh, Under Armour, a lot of talk about HANA, uh, in-memory databases and mobile and the transformation of organizations and of course SAP itself. And of course we're here at ServiceNow talking a lot about transformation as well. ServiceNow is a really interesting company that'll do about $400 million this year and like Salesforce.com, like Workday, they provide software as a service in the cloud, of course. Unlike those two companies, however, they provide services to IT. And Jeff Frick, we have been hearing just amazing stories in the last day and a half about these IT practitioners and how excited they are about actually having a product and a platform delivered for them to help them run the business of IT. Yeah, it was, it was fun yesterday having Carolyn on from uh, Linux and talking about, as, as you know, not a real senior person, seeing, the, seeing this tool that's out there that she really thought could change her world, change her life, and, and help her become really a business, kind of the theme, the business partner, and not just a button pusher, and, and the fact that she was able to get that through and finally got the budget, and it has been transformative, and now other departments are sneaking in and asking her and her team if they can help, help them out with some of their processes as they have in the IT, that was great. And then today, we just got out of the, the second keynote, day two keynote by Fred Luddy, the founder and chief product officer, and really a, a fun talk, a great history lesson. The, the guy opens every introduction. He did with us yesterday and he did his keynote that you know I'm happy to celebrate being a developer for 40 years. So this um, revolution of the, you know power getting back to the developer and all these enabling tools for the developer that they're not hindered in, in developing stuff uh, is a theme we've seen time and time again in our summer tour, everything from OpenStack to AWS and now here and Frank as, as the founder of this company and really you can feel it with the, with the, with the folks, the heart and soul of this company um, really takes that forward and, and drives a lot of the excitement. Yeah Fred, we have Fred Luddy coming on at uh, 10 o'clock Pacific time, so just in about 20 minutes. And uh, we're going to, yesterday we talked a lot about the iPad app that they announced and the iPad support. Uh, today we're going to talk about the company, its history, get Fred's perspectives on what's hot in the industry, what the big mega technology trends are, we'll review his keynote. He's a really interesting fellow and I really would encourage you all to, to hang on for, for that one. Fred is a true alpha geek and I mean that in a really uh, complimentary way. He's a guy that is a real visionary. I mean, I'm reminded of, Jeff, when we go to the O'Reilly Media Conferences, I mean, one of the things that, that Tim O'Reilly is really good at is spotting trends. And what Tim has said to us on theCUBE is, look, I, I got the greatest job in the world because I can just, I, he's good at trend spotting, but he says the, his methodology is to just hang out with alpha geeks, hang out with guys like Fred Luddy. What do you see? And we heard from Doug Leone yesterday, you, you had asked him, well, what about ServiceNow attracted you you know, way back, way back then, when you started to, when you invested in them, and what about Fred Luddy? And he had said, well, he really had a clear vision, and it was really easy to understand, and uh, it, we bought into it and invested, you know, early and often, and boy, did it ever pay off. Yeah, and, and it's consistent again with this keynote today where Fred talked about all these great technological leaps are really done by people. You know, there are people that are trying to solve problems and they're using tools, often technology in the space that we cover to solve them. And so it is um, you know, something that, that is unique and, and we're glad you're here with us in the queue because we get the people here and talk to the people and kind of get the story behind the story of how they come up with these ideas, what's their motivation, 
to drive forward, to build these great companies, to develop the technology to support their vision. And as Douglas said, Fred had a really clear vision because he thought it through, he really believed, he saw the future, and, um, and sure enough, you know, what, six years later, seven years later, here we are, and he's got a great company, a huge conference, and they're off to the races. Yeah, and you know, they don't talk a ton about cloud. You know, salesforce.com, they have the, you know, no software sign, and, and, and that's great marketing. You don't hear that so much from ServiceNow. It's cloud is sort of a, an afterthought. I mean, they're certainly there, and they talk about, they talk about security, and certainly, of course, their customers are concerned about that, but they talk more about transforming IT. They talk about how, essentially, IT is, in the way in which IT is managed, is like the, the cobbler's kids right. have no right. shoes. And so, and it's true. If you think about, I mean, I've been around IT shops all my life, and it's, it's a compilation of spreadsheets and various tool sets and asset management systems and what's inside of you know, Joe's head that essentially runs the business of IT. Uh, and then of course you've got you know, uh, IT finance and you've got uh, you know, operations and it's just all these really bespoke systems and business processes and what ServiceNow has done, and it sounds so simple, is they've essentially consolidated all those under a single record of management and a change management database um, they use today MySQL, although I understand uh, that they're migrating to uh, MongoDB, yep. uh, which is, I'm sure, a, 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 an open source and scaling kind of, kind yep, of, kind of issue. Scaling. And um, and I think that you know they're trying to keep up with those cloud trends. Obviously, they're a they're a you know service provider, and there really are three distinct classes, if you will, at least three of cloud service providers, and and they're evolving. So there's a the, the, the infrastructure as a service folks, and of course the poster child for that is Amazon, and then you've got the platform as a service you know, crowd, which uh, Salesforce is be becoming, uh, and certainly Google and Microsoft with Azure, and, and, and many, many others, VMware with Cloud Foundry. Uh, and then you've got the software as a service, which of course Salesforce started, you, know, you would certainly put ServiceNow in that category, and many, many, many other companies, but you're starting, Jeff, to see those lines blur. I mean, even for instance, Amazon, which is infrastructure as a service, announcing something like Redshift, which is a, 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 a data warehouse and for the cloud. Now, that's infrastructure, you know, but it starts to move up the stack. Uh, you see companies like Salesforce.com started as a pure Salesforce automation CRM platform, is now sort of becoming a platform as a service with Heroku and obviously uh, appealing to application developers. And even ServiceNow, which you would consider pretty much a pure play SaaS vendor, actually, and we're going to talk about this more today with some of the executives, actually starts to bleed into the pass domain with things like App Creator. Of course, it's, you know, it's not Python, it's not Heroku, it's, I mean, of course you can program in Java, but it's really designed for non-technical people that want to build apps. So they, in, in a sense, are a platform as a service provider. Yeah. And the, and the other trend I think that is just continues to get hammered every time we go to one of these shows is, is people using uh, consumer technology companies as, a, as kind of a platform for how they're building these new modern enterprise companies. Well, what I mean by that is, first off, is the UI and the way the apps work. What's the expected behavior of an application that people interface with based on their experience with the other apps that they're on at home? The next piece that I think is interesting is to develop an ecosystem. And there's a really active ecosystem downstairs. Not only do they have the app creator tool for really the internal people to build things on, but you've got a whole ecosystem of folks downstairs that are building extensions and applications on top of the ServiceNow platform. So again, kind of that app store concept, and we talked a little bit about that yesterday, and we didn't get a, we got a, a very firm, I will neither confirm or deny the, uh, the rumors of an app store coming down the pike. So, I think that's interesting. And the, the third piece that I don't think comes up as often as it should is really thinking about the next generation of employees and who these people are trying to appeal to. Because if you looked at the LinkedIn page for every executive uh, that we've had on for the last two days for ServiceNow, their lead item is we're hiring, we're hiring, we're hiring. So when you think of the kids, their behaviors, what they've grown up now, this new class of kids coming up, you know, again, their expectations of what's available, how to access it, when it's available, how it's available, very different than, uh, than old guys like you and me, Dave, that didn't grow up in this era. Well, let me tell you something, Jeff. I've been watching Frank Slootman now since the mid-2000s when he was CEO of Data Domain, also a public company, Blockbuster uh, acquisition by EMC Corp. That was an interesting deal because NetApp actually made uh, an offer 
for data domain, <clears throat> and then EMC matched it, and then NetApp you know, tried to, EMC beat it, then NetApp tried to match EMC, and then EMC just plunked down a bunch of cash and said, Psh, you're ours. And, and then the whole data domain team, of course, went over to, to EMC, and Frank stayed there for about a year, and, and then left to go do some uh, VC at Greylock, and then of course is now at ServiceNow. But I will tell you something about Frank Slootman. If you work for Frank Slootman, chances are you're hiring, because his philosophy in, in speaking to him and observing him is you, you got to get the product or the service right. Figure that out. And clearly, he stepped into a situation with ServiceNow where it was you know, very strong <clears throat> value proposition. The product was right. And then, so once you get it right, it's all about scale. Global scale, customer penetration, distribution channels, finding new markets, finding new applications. And that's exactly what you're seeing with ServiceNow uh, at the moment. You're seeing Frank Slootman and his team throwing serious gasoline on the fire, and this thing is in, in a meteoric rise. We're talking about 80% growth last quarter, year on year. Um, they're projecting 60 to 70% for year end. I, I think that's probably conservative, uh, based on the, the conversations that we've been having with customers. 30% of the attendees at this event are prospective customers, and how could you come to this event and not go back uh, to your uh, IT organization and say, look, there are our peers, are driving transformation. They're cutting costs, they're improving efficiencies, they're running their IT operation, which is critical, like a business. Why aren't we doing that? Right. Uh, right. How can you not do that? And so this, I think the opportunity for these guys is just enormous. So their you know, near-term goal, near to midterm, is let's get to a billion. Now, once they get to a billion, it starts to get interesting. When a software company gets to a billion, you know, that starts to get you know, really interesting in terms of, okay, how do they expand their total available market? Right. But right now, TAM expansion is not their problem. It's, it's penetration of their serve market is right. their challenge. And, and, and I'm very impressed, again, by the variety and spread of the customers that we're seeing here, all the way from little mom and pop shops to a whole bunch of retailers, big retailers, who, again, you don't think of as kind of a classic IT big sale, all the way up to you know, large enterprises, uh, many of whom they, they had on the stage the other day with, with my, my favorite line of the Coca-Cola that's in every country, we learned every country in the world except for five. We don't know how many countries there are in the world, but Coke's in every one except for five. So, you know, big companies are using this, small companies are using this. Um, so clearly, they've got great opportunity. We're going to have the CFO on later today. We can talk a little bit about that. And, and again, the other metric that we discussed, and again, they're a public company, can read it in the prospectuses, not the prospectus, but the, uh, the quarterlies is their customer retention rate and their gross margin are both really high and position them uh, to give him the ammunition to, to, to grow this thing. Yeah, so let's talk about who we're going to talk to today. So we got Fred Luddy coming on at around uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. That's about 12 minutes, so, so stay tuned for that. And then uh, we've got a number of executives from ServiceNow, guys who are running their platforms. Um, uh, and then, but the really exciting thing today is the customers. We're going to hear from Moritz, CareWorks, uh, FICO, we're going to hear from Yale University, numerous customers coming on today and tomorrow. We're also going to have on Beth White. Now, Beth White was Frank's, Frank Slootman's CMO at Data Domain and helped build that company uh, to a, its successful exit. It, this is a, a, a larger company and I think it's a you know, more valuable company and I think it's got much more potential market size. Uh, but Beth is you know, really a very strong CMO, uh, somebody that, again, I've watched for a number of years. Uh, she Really, everybody back in the 2000s, mid-2000s, was doing this thing called data deduplication in the storage world, and they, Data Domain was able to differentiate you know, with very, very strong product, but also very strong marketing. You're seeing also very strong marketing from ServiceNow. We were talking to Beth White last night at the, uh, the reception, the customer reception, and, and she basically told us that it's so easy. I get my marketing from my, my, my clients, the end users are really tell them, telling us what to say. Now she's being very humble. I think she's very savvy and, and sharp marketeer, but we're going to talk to her about you know, their, their philosophy of marketing, their strategy, making marketing a source of value, but also this event and how it's grown. And we're also going to talk to Mike Scarpelli, who's the CFO of ServiceNow. Very interesting, again, from an economic standpoint, as a company went public, they were the first company to go public in tech after Facebook. Frank Slootman called it the, the face plant <laughs> IPO. And I remember, <clears throat> Jeff, at the time, I was looking for the next Google. I mean, so you remember the big IPOs, big te tech IPOs that have lifted the market dramatically. There was Netscape uh, in the you know, mid-90s, 96, I think it was. And then you had Google, I believe it was 2003. It gave a big lift, a halo effect, to other technology companies. <clears throat> I was expecting the same out of Facebook, but what happened, as many of you recall, is essentially, 
the bankers and Facebook got a little greedy, yeah. and they went out at I think thirty-eight dollars a share, Extracted and the market went every little bit. You got to be kidding me! They've squeezed all the the the, the juice from the lemon. Yeah. I'm not investing in this thing, and it just you know yeah. went south. And I think it's still struggling to sort of hang out to where it was at, at IPO day. So that created this cloud, no pun intended, over a lot of the companies that were doing you know IPOs, and the market sort of soured on that. I mean. And so, because you know, good quality IPOs are hard to find, and here's this great quality IPO, and they sort of overprice it. And so, Slootman was saying yesterday, they were very nervous about going public. Now, subsequent to that, we've seen a, just an extremely successful IPO out of service now, and we saw one from Workday last year. So, it's, so these guys are like, you, know, you called it, Jeff, the three horsemen of, of SaaS. It's, it's Salesforce, it's Workday, and it's ServiceNow. Three companies, very strong. Of course, Salesforce much larger and much more established. Workday and ServiceNow are on a trajectory that's very similar, about the same size companies, you know, very strong uh, leaders, steeped in the technology industry. Of course, in the case of Workday, Anil Bushri and uh, Dave Duffield, and in the case of uh, ServiceNow, you're talking about Fred Luddy, uh, who's a rock star <laughs> amongst his pe peers, <laughs> and of course, Frank Slootman. Yeah, it, was, it's, it, it should be a good day. It should be a good day. So stay with us. We'll be back with, uh, with Fred to get the day started. We're theCUBE. We're at ServiceNow Knowledge 13. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. We talk to the people you wish you could talk to. We ask them the questions that you wish you could ask them. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>